Okay, wonderful. I'm also happy to be back. It's great to be back. Um, so as Jens was saying, there are lots of uh, fantastic talks on the schedule, and we start this morning uh, with Rico St. Bruce with the first talk. Yeah, thank you. Thanks to all the organizers. It's great to be here. Um, so I want to talk about, uh, about past TSB. And so I cheated a bit and I started writing some stuff already, most of the basic things. Um, so I want to talk about the five approximation for the past TSB problem. Let me just first set the stage. So we have uh, so those considered a complete undirected graph. So we have metric weights, so called edge lengths. We'll talk about shortest paths or shortest joints to, to signify that that is shortest with respect to the length. And we have a start and end point, S and T, and they are distinct. So of course, if they're equal, if the TSP problem, to some extent, you can think of past TSP as a natural generalization of the TSP problem, where the endpoints don't need to be identical. Um, the task is. Uh, it's clear you want to find the shortest ST tour. When I say ST tour, what I mean is a Hamiltonian path from S to T. But of course, because the, the lengths are metric, um, you can just as well allow for a uh, visiting a vertex more than once. So the tool is a vertex besides the one, you can visit more than once because you can short that. Uh, because they're metric. Good. So, um, so think of it as follows. What you actually want to find is, that's also normally the way people think about it in terms of, of TSP, you want to find the graph that's a subset of the edges that's connected. And has the right parities. And parities in the path TSP case means even everywhere except for SMT where you're opt. Of course, in TSP, you want to find the value of graph. When I think you're um, So, what about approximation? What's known about approximation factors? So, it's really just approximation factors for, for this general metric TSP or path TSP case. There's a lot of exciting work beyond that, of course. We will hear some of that also today. Um, so, there is a man. So for TSP, it's a bit quick. There's still the algorithm of Christopher Fides is unbeaten, the one that five approximation. There's been improvements for, uh, for graphic metrics, but, um, uh, or for special types of graphs, but um, uh, not for general case, that's still, that's still the um, uh, where things stand. For path TSP, um, it's a bit more complicated. So, so it turns out that Christopher Fides algorithm can also be applied to path TSP. So Christopher Fides algorithm, which is, uh, I wrote it down here, which was a spanning tree to connect the graph and then correct the parities. You could just try to correct parities in the sense I explained before for a past TSP case that you get off degrees at S and T and even everywhere else. So but it turns out that algorithm is not a one five approximation for path TSP, and I will explain to you why that's the case in a, in a second. It's only a five over three approximation. That's what we even show. Okay. There's a very nice analysis by Lawrence Wolsey, by the way, which I will briefly explain later on. That is uh, it's kind of the basis for some of the reasons coming later on. Then about 20 years later, uh, Anne Kleinberg and Schmois made the, the first breakthrough by showing that one can improve that factor. So that's actually indeed the golden ratio you see here. And, um, and they essentially use two new ingredients. Maybe, um, so maybe one is one may not root the ingredient, and maybe one that is uh, structural inside. And this is much more, but let me try to simplify things a little bit. So the algorithmic ingredient is that, uh, I mean, so far in Christophe, is you have a single spanning tree, and then you try to correct parity. So you start with the amnesty, typically. What they do is they say, from here on, people moved to the health car relaxation. What they did is they point, first found a point in the health car relaxation, then they, do a, they write as a convex combination of spanning trees, and then they try out, because Sophia's algorithm, they apply it to each spanning tree in the convex, I mean, it is in the convex decomposition, and retrieve, just keep the best solution. So it's, uh, people like to call this now, so they later adopt the, the best of many Christophides, because you look at many spanning trees, take the best one. Uh, and that indeed improves on the 5 over 3. So there's, there's value in not just looking at MST, but, but looking at a larger set of kind of spanning trees. Um, so Anders, uh, Anders gave a very nice analysis that uh, for the precise same algorithm that improves this down to 1.6. Um, then Jens showed that actually for the, for the best of men, so you have the, uh, to say, a bunch of spanning trees you consider, but instead of just considering them right away, you could first try to change them a bit. You could try to reassemble them. And indeed, to get a better structure, and, and yet showed you can indeed improve on bundle six by, by doing such a reassembly. Um, then Anders and, and, uh, uh, and Anke showed uh, that one can actually get even further below. Uh, however, what's, what's interesting here, so the one thing I like essentially about all those papers is every paper brings in a pretty interesting new idea. So what they showed, I mean, up to here what happened is that, as I said, you, have an, uh, you want to find a connected graph with the correct parties. So two things you have to take care of. Connected, connectedness and parities. So, so far, people always did this. Um, I mean, in, other, in, in this context, what they always did is they first guaranteed connectedness by starting with a spanning tree, and then they fixed parities. So, here they deviate from that approach. I mean, people already deviate from that approach in, in different contexts, in graph TSP, for example, but here it was new. 
So what they did is they first called the spanning tree, and then they deleted some actions of the spanning tree, which after parity correction, do you have to then graph the different connected components, but after parity correction, it's likely that those components reconnect. So essentially, you can use parity correction not just for to correct parities, but also to, to get back to a connected graph. And there was a, a breakthrough algorithm, I mean, breakthrough is all there. This year at SODA, I'm actually the, the best SODA paper award, uh, 1.5 plus epsilon approximation that's based on a dynamic program. And I was also glad that my show today is heavily inspired by, by this one here, especially, and those use of dynamic programs. So the idea is, use a dynamic program to actually obtain a particular point in the health part organization, then it will work with that point. So the dynamic program will not lead immediately to an integer solution or standard tree, but it will first give you a, a fraction point, then keep going from that point. And I'll get a bit more into that later. Um, so I talked about two things that they, that they introduced, but I only mentioned one, just realize. So one was the, the distribution of standard trees, that's what many of is. But something else that they showed is that they used the, the notion of so-called narrow cuts. Those are cuts with respect to the half cargo, I mean, the point in the half cargo relaxation. They look at cuts with values strictly below 2. I will introduce a formula later, but I'm mentioning it already right now. But what's interesting is that those cuts to form a chain, and they're kind of the reason why Christophe's algorithm does not work, I mean, works, but does not give a 1 to 5 approximation in the past TSP case. So people, from here on, they all study very heavily narrow cuts, and all those papers are based on narrow cuts. So I will deviate from that approach. I will work with a, with a different set of cuts. It's much less structured, but I will need only weaker properties, but I will come back to that. Um, good. And so I will show the 1 to 5 approximation, so happy that the experts working previously on the field uh, left an absent on for me, uh, literally. So, I'm, uh, so I think the 1 to 5, uh, I mean, most of this, maybe a few things I want to highlight about that approximation. I mean, one is just the deviation from narrow cuts, but also one thing that I think is nice is the algorithm is substantially simpler than most of the algorithms you see here. So it's actually, a, it's not just to make that factor, but also simplicity is key. Um, also, as I said, the generalization of TSP, so this now puts those two problems on par. So if you want to make further improvements on path TSP, you have to be because of TSP. That's also kind of, of nice. It's a natural barrier to indicate at that moment. Good, so much about the intros. If you have questions at any time, just, just feel free to interrupt me, please. So now I would like to, um, uh, to walk you through that sort of one of five approximation kind of uh, step by step. Oh, that is some black pod lights. Uh. No, this was not more. This was even worse. Oh, I'm wondering what is this? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Thanks, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, so let's start with Christophides algorithm, because uh, most of your audience you may know that. But I want to do it for two reasons. I mean, first I want to introduce some basic notation. But also I want to show you, explain to you, I mean, how we try to, because all those algorithms of the mind is, is motivated by, by Christophe's algorithm. And actually what I will show is, I will show you you can make that algorithm work in the path TSP setting. You just need to choose, you can find a spanning tree, such that Christophe's algorithm will give you a 1 to 5 approximation. And the artist just defined the right spanning tree. Good. So Christophe just chooses first, and so this is for TSP, so choose a minimum spanning tree. As I said, you correct the, the parities, you look at the odd degree vertices, I'll just call them odd t. And then you want to find the shortest odd t join. So let me just, uh, just clarify that. So I'm uh, so an odd t, or it's a q join. For some set uh, vertices q in canality. It's an edge set such that the odd degree varices of J are precise. That's what a Q join is. Of course, it's precisely what you need to craft the pattern. So if you add them. And so uh, when I write this, this union sign with a dot, what I mean is a, it's a, it's a multi union. So you can just take the spanning tree and the join. If the match appears twice, you keep it twice, then you have an array and graph. And you can do short cutting in case it can't work that into work. Or you can just keep it that way. So you want to find a layer. Good. Let's do a quick example. Assume you so start with some spanning tree T, then look at the odd degree vertices. 
Um, yeah. It's RT. You find the T join. J. You take the disjoint. Of course, that's a new area. So why, why is it a one to five approximation? So there's a, a very simple reason that it's combinatorial. I mean, first, you can easily see that the amount that the length of the spanning tree costs no more than opt. Is immediately if opt is an optimal solution. It's clear because an optimal solution is a tool, which is if you remove an action of a spanning tree, so an optimal solution contains a spanning tree, therefore the, the minimum spanning tree is no more expensive than the optimal solution. That makes sense. Um, and moreover, the join, and I'll actually replicate precisely that analysis. The join is at most half the length of opt. And normally the reason you apply here, at least the combinatorial reasoning, is that people look the thought experiment at the optimal solution, so that is a tour. So then somewhere on there are the opt the opt t vertices that we from that from the tour. I think um, that's six of them. And now you can simply go along the tour and alternate them. Just also look at pass between two yellow vertices and take them uh, alternatively, so you alternate between. And this will be a, a T, an opt T join. If you take the complement, it's another opt T join. Therefore, the optimal solution, any tool can be partitioned into two opt T joins. Therefore, the shorter one is the most half off. And that's the end of the, of course, the field's proof. So that's one way to analyze the algorithm. Um, so it's actually for, for what I want to do next. It's, uh, so this is, this is the reason it actually fails in the past ESP case. For what I next, I want to go to the health hardware section. I would like to briefly replicate Bolz's analysis. And, uh, because we need to we use many reasonings that, um, that are similar to analysis. So what is Wolz's analysis? So the yellow shows that, <coughs> that Christophe's algorithm is a one five approximation, but um, uh, not just with respect to OCT, but with respect to the best called CARP solution. So it's this opportunity to introduce the health CARP relaxation. So first introduce it for TSP. Points on the edge set, such that the degrees are correct, so the degrees should be two everywhere. And then every cut goes one after at least two units. That's the whole card section. So it makes sense. Whenever you have them, uh, every, every cut, of course, you have to go at least once in and once out. So but what Lawrence showed is that for any point, Pick any point that has car relaxation. I mean, you can think of it as, as the optimal one, as the one that's the shortest. But there are two properties that hold. The first one is that if you scale it down by a little bit, so V minus 1 over V, then the point is in the spanning tree for the top. Simple exercise, but it's a, it's a beautiful problem. And the second one is the, so this guarantees. So let me first do the second one. The second one is that actually the point half of the point is in what I call the dominant. It's the dominant of actually this Q joint for it for any Q. So it's the dominant. means that if you have a point, so a point in here is such that if you can decrease some of its components, then it's a complex combination of Q joints. So it turns out that you can decry the correction no matter what the set of is. So in other words, um, so this implies that that the length of, of the shortest standing tree is no more than the length of this because that's a point in a spanning tree polytope and short spanning trees. Of course, the shortest one. So this means, I can just write it this way. I actually know this victim inequality if I care about that. And, uh, and this property also implies that, this implies that the length of the shortest of T join okay, is also no more than half the length of, of Y. So no matter, um, 
So no matter what kind, with what point why you start in the health carbonization, you have these two properties, so you can just as well start with the, with, you can start with the optimal solution that will give you an, uh, a lower bound on off, and then you have a one to five approximation with respect to off. But more importantly, it shows you that actually the, the health carb relaxation has integrality gap with most than uh, one to five. And that's the, uh, you know, one of the, of the big open questions whether uh, the integrality gap is lower, potentially maybe just four or three, which is a lower bound. So. So this also gives me an opportunity to introduce that uh, dominant of the Q-joint polytope. So, uh, so I introduced it already, what, what it means, and, but there's a very nice description for it, and we'll use that later. The dominant can be described as uh, all the points on the edge set, such that if at least one unit in each path, uh, and then all the intersection it's kind of natural when you look at a bunch of points. We'll normally not draw the, the edges because of a complete graph, so it's not so easy just to think that just think about all edges being present. And let's say this was a very easy Q, and clearly if you have a cut that splits this, this Q set into two offsets, then any Q join needs at least one edge crossing. Not the reasoning is a little that you can use in this. I mean, for properties like that, and so, I mean, I will briefly repeat it because it, it, it similar reasons later on is that you can assume no actual crossing, but then you have a graph in here, right, an induced top graph. But I mean, that, that is the handshake you are not saying that the number of odd vertices here has to be even, but this violates the fact that the number of odd vertices should be odd. Well, it's the way you would prove that quickly, and that will prove similar things later on. Good. Or, um, not that much happened. Now well, let me go back to path TSP. This sounds longer. <laughs> okay, now let's go back to path TSP. So let's think about what fails in the path TSP case. And, uh, and here's exactly one point I want to highlight also with, with uh, Lawrence's analysis, which is that, so the second property, why is it true that, every, that for any point in the hard relaxation, half of it is in the dominant of the Q-joint polytope? This immediately follows from the two descriptions on top, right? The hard card relaxation tells you that you have at least two units in, in each, actually in each cut, no matter what kind of play you're looking at, and what the, what the dominant of the Q-joint polytope requires is that only for a subset of the cuts, those that are, the, like to call them Q-off, that means that the part of the team is actually Q's off. Only for those, you need to have at least one unit. But I mean, of course, the health carbonization shows that for each cut, you have to take half of it at least one unit. That's also why you have the property that no matter what Q is, you will always then be dominant. However, it's going to fail for the, um, uh, for the path PSB case because the, um, uh, the health card relaxation will look different. Because for cuts, for SD cuts, you don't need, need to have two and uh, two edges crossing them. There are solutions with only one edge crossing SD cuts. So we first think about the um, uh, um, about the pattern correction. The software, what does it mean to apply Christophe's algorithm in path TSP? So to um, uh, so the pattern correction. Spanning tree T needs to a join, but what kind of join? It's a, so you want to have, if you use an odd T join, you will have even degrees everywhere. But you want to have odd degrees in SMT, so you need to join an odd T symmetric difference as T join. That's what you need to get the right characters. 
So the algorithm would be fine. So we can start with a tree, and I'll tell you how to get the tree later on. That's the main, that's the main part of the, of the whole uh, algorithm. Then what you have to do is find the minimum odd t, symmetric difference as t joint, then do the same thing, just like the, the union of the, the multi union shortcut if you want to have to have a reform mechanism in pass. Good. OK, so I mean, now let's go to the health card relaxation. So that's what you have to do if you want to apply some algorithm. So the health card relaxation for path TSP, let's say path, but I will just, because I will just from now on talk about the path case, I will just denote this by P health card. So again, it's, it's very simple. It's vectors on the edge set. You want to have the correct degrees. Correct degrees means that S and T. You have a degree that's equal to 1. You have a degree of, of 2. And then the other vertex in the graph. You still have the cups have a value of 2, but not all of them. Only the um, uh, only cuts that are not that are not as T separating. But for cuts that separate as a T, you only have a lower bound of one. So now you see why the second property fails. Right? And if you will try to just replicate Walter's analysis, um, but of course, with some, with some cuts that potentially have a value below 2, if you take off, then they're below 1. So it's also it's one point where things start to deviate quite uh, substantially from, uh, uh, from, uh, uh, from, from the TSP case, which is the TSP case, so far, when we look at the T join at the join polytope, the dominant of some Q joint polytope, the T joint polytope, to be precise. We didn't care about OT because we had enough, uh, I mean, enough uh, load on the edges so we could correct parities for no matter what the uh, Q is. But now we have to start thinking about that. So in a path least case, so I'll, I'll try to um, uh, um, I'll try to understand. I mean, it's also what, what, what the other papers also started doing already since uh, since the improvements for path TSP. You have to understand in which cases those those bad cuts kick in and, and when they and how you can avoid that. So it's kind of a, of a key difference between the TSP and path TSP. Uh, let me say a few words about what I'm. Uh, um, so maybe I would like to call this QT. So, so the the vertices which need parity correction and then the, the tree T for the path TSP case. So let me use a few words about um, what was done previously because it gives a nice transition to where I want to go. Mm. So. Um, so from now I will denote by X star an optimal solution to the half power section. Again, half power section is always for the SD case for now. And, um, and let me just briefly talk about, about the narrow cuts. So that's a the focus on so-called narrow cuts. So what are narrow cuts? Narrow cuts are those cuts which could potentially lead to issues with the reasoning we um, talked about before, maybe to the point number two of, of Lawrence's analysis. This means those are all the cuts C. Let me um, uh, this way. First, such that their value is strictly the two. Because if you have no such cuts, you could just replicate analysis and, and everything is, uh, is done. There's nothing to, to change. And so what they showed, so what this is introduced, this notion introduced by Anne Feinberg and, and Schmoyce, and what they showed, it's actually very easy to see, but it's, again, very beautiful structural properties, that those narrow cuts, they form a chain. First, it's clear those last key cuts, right, it's the only cuts that could potentially be narrow, but moreover, they form a chain, because um, uh, you can see this as follows. I mean, imagine you have two narrow cuts that are, that are intersecting, I mean, this is all, all this crossing with those last key cuts. So there's this property um, uh, of the similarity of, of cut functions, similarity and symmetry, which tells you that, that the value of the edges crossing here plus the value of edges crossing here is at least the value of edges crossing this area plus the value of edges crossing that area. Right? But in these two areas, those are non-SD cuts. So by the hard relaxation, you'd have at least two units crossing here and at least two units crossing here. 
This means the sum of this and this cost must be at least four. This is why that is affected both on the other. I'll bring this reasoning later on in a different context, but I think for those who don't know about coming to a long crossing, this should be a very quick uh, grasp. The delta of S and delta of T are always narrow cuts, or you consider narrow cuts for sets that are not single? <coughs> That's the second idea. Delta of S and delta of T. Yeah. I guess there are always narrow cuts. Yes. Uh, there always. So there is always a set of narrow cuts. Yeah, exactly. So it's exactly. That's a good point. Yeah, I, I, was in, uh, yeah, I think I said that exactly. <laughs> it's true. So don't hope for not having any narrow cuts. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, that's true. Um, very good. Uh, good. So in, uh, but now let's just talk a bit about. Um, so before I keep uh, started, the the gap to one approximation, I'll talk about. And as I said, one thing that's important is now we have to understand when are those cuts relevant in the dominant of the corresponding QT joint polytope and when not. So let me just write this dominant uh, once more. Uh, so you have to correct with respect to the QT joint polytope, the dominant of the QT joint polytope. So here my QT was this set of vertices with the wrong padding. So let me just write this out once more. So those are important. What are the cuts you have to care about? So you have to make sure that. But that's if at least one unit for every cut C, right? Uh, so I should see intersection QT. Let me write it out this time. That's off T symmetric difference as T. It's off T. So the question is when do I mean the so as I said, I'm very thankful for the correction. So don't hope for not having any narrow cuts, but you could hope that those narrow cuts don't appear here as those cuts here. This is actually a reasonable hope. Uh, there's the other one, of course not. So, um, so let's try to understand when that happens, because it's really key in understanding, I mean, the result will show next, but also many of the results that have been uh, before my, uh, my contribution. So when is a cut, so it depends, of course, on the tree. When is a cut, an SD cut, a cut that appears in this description? So it's, all, it's just a question of parodies. Let me, uh, let me first give you an intuitive explanation, and I'm happy to give you a formal one. So let's look at a spanning tree. So let's take one. Let's say you have a spanning tree uh, T that's let's take this cut here, for example. Let's say it's an odd number of edges crossing that cut. Now question, does it appear in that in that description or not? So it kind of just depends on the parity of number of edges crossing the cut. It doesn't matter how the tree looks like on the right hand side or left hand side, it's just count the number of edges crossing the cut. But if you believe in this, it just depends on that. Then it's not so hard to guess whether this, should, this is a good or bad cut because, I mean, a true solution that will cross the cut an odd number of times. So this should not need parity correction because obviously it's the right path, right? However, if I have an even number of an even number of crossings, so that's the wrong path. This is only need parity correction. But if you are a fan of formal reasonings, we can go back to the, the same reasoning we did up there. What we could say is, so imagine, let's take this, um, and maybe let's take this one, the, the odd one. So let's just let's remove these three edges and just look at the, at the subgraph over here. So again, now the number of odd degree vertices is even. So I'm shaking that once more. So it means the number of odd t vertices here is even. Okay. If you add the edges back, there's an odd degrees flowing in, so the number of odd t vertices will now be odd. Okay. But now you don't care about the odd t vertices, you care about odd t symmetric difference S and T. So the, the role of S flips is even again. And so it does not. And then to conclude the same reasoning the other way around for I mean, for the even. But, um, but even if this was quick, uh, I mean just, just give in mind the following. Whenever you have a cut, an SD cut, where an odd number of edges are crossing, it's a cut that will not appear in that description. It does not need pad regression. If an even number is crossed, you have to correct the patterns. Because the only thing you need to you need to kind of keep from that. Uh, take away from, from this. It's very important because it makes it much easier to think about what we have to do later on instead of kind of think all the time about odd t symmetric difference as a t. Good. Uh, very good. Let me see where I, uh, where I am. This looks okay. Um, so, I've seen that. so let me um, so now let me start with the actual uh, algorithm on that. So, so, so I said the um, so what we'll do is I will move away from uh, from narrow cuts. So, 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 so,
talk a little bit more about narrow cuts, but maybe I have time to do the record. So, I mean, imagine you, wanna, you wanted to find our spanning tree that, such that you can use x star over 2 as the parity correction vector. So x star is the, is the point that defines the narrow cuts, right? So what you need is you want a spanning tree that is, that is odd, so there's an odd number of vectors in each of those narrow cuts, right? And that is precisely the reason we had beforehand. So if you could find a shorter spanning tree with an odd number of vectors in each of the narrow cuts here, then you're done. Right? Because it's still a relaxation. And then you can just use x over to a parity correction vector. And um, what is the issue is the following. So you could, I could just tell you a more pure problem. I could tell you, okay, give you a chain of SD cuts. Find for me a span, a shorter span entry that is odd in each of those cuts. The issue is the problem is empty hard. So, so I don't know how to find such a span entry. And uh, you probably will never, never will know how to do that. And so I'll shoot for something a bit, uh, a bit weaker in terms of properties. But I will look at may, way more cuts than narrow cuts. So do kind of a trade-off between the cuts I will consider and, uh, and the property you want to have in those cuts. And so now I would like to do this photo settle. Um, I would first introduce a new, um, uh, a new notion, then later try to explain to you why that notion, and especially I can prove it is better notion here. I will do it, but give one to five uh, quite quickly. So, a key ingredient I need are what I like to call a BX star with points. Let me immediately be clear what I mean with that. So, so this bx star for all the cuts, so actually st cuts, so I can draw the st cuts, such that their value is uh, strictly less than 3. So it's like narrow cuts, but I put the bound up to 3 instead of 2. And I want to find a good tree with respect to all of those cuts. So they're not, they're not that structured anymore. They can cross each other, so this is not a chain anymore. But um, uh, that gives me some more flexibility. Because somehow I know that outside of bx star, x star is a, is a really good parity correction vector. Because it's better than 3 and all the other cuts outside there. And so I will then find a new parity correction vector by mixing x star with a different health carson. But let's get to that point uh, slowly. So let's first see um, what I want to achieve. So the only definition I actually write formally for blackboard. So a point, um, a point y in the hardcore portal is what I like to call b good. So I introduced a notion for um, uh, for any family of SD cuts. If the following holds, if for every cut you have in that family, one of two properties will, will hold. So either either you have a single action in cuts. So this means so far it's been single in a, a load of one, but I actually want to have really a single edge, so in y is integral on the cut. Or the point is much with at least three units in the cut. So they call B good. So I, I like to think about, about health corp solutions. <coughs> I think I have to look it up. About health corp solutions that have this property with respect to family. So either it's a single edge in there, so, so keep in mind, so you have as a T, you have those this cuts B, which could look somehow like that, right? And so for each such cut, either there's a single edge in there. The value of one, and all the other ones in the cut have value zero, right? or at least three units. I mean, again, ideally, but, but I mean, in, the, in my dream world, I would love to say um, it's just odd. Right? It's just always an odd number, no matter no matter what cut you have, an in integral. Ideally, I can't achieve that. So let's go for that one. Uh, and it turns out that is actually a, it's a property you can optimize over. The dream essentially follows by the dynamic program of of Jens and uh, and Vera. I mean, it's 
I mean, what I do is I do a recursive dynamic program. They have to call the program itself, I mean, itself again, but then, uh, this can be heavily simplified for a setting I, I care about. But you could just as well draw the properties from the analysis, actually. But I will simplify things because it's a much simpler setting. So what I can do is, that's the main theorem, oh, we call it one night. Um, so it turns out that you can find shortest beacon points, shorter, the shortest beacon point. So here, beacon points are always held call points that I can find. And can be found in, uh, in a time that is polynomial. So I don't really try to optimize uh, experiments. Let me just show you how you can get polynomial time algorithms in the vertices and the cardinality of the family. So it's a key technical lemma, and I will show this by dynamic programming again, just that following this approach by by, by data and Jens, essentially, and simplifying it. Um, but, um, uh, but that's the main property. I claim if you can get that, you're done. And let me explain that uh, right and after the question. Yeah, does it, does it matter that B comes from there, or is it any set of SD cuts? That's so this holds for any set of SD cuts. Okay. So it's a good point. So it's not fully sort of formal theorem. So this is true for any set of SD cuts B. Yeah. Right. I mean, we'll plug in BX star, but uh, it holds sure. for any set of SD. I prefer writing that because when I talk about it later on, then we can forget about this uh, other core point and, uh, and kind of focus on the actual properties that you can get. I mean, how to get that. So it's interesting. So to some extent, there's, there's a set of properties that it turns out you can optimize over them efficiently. So you could, you could think of that as a, if you, if you want to, as a new relaxation. Of course, in the expansion sense, you have to first provide a, a set of SD cuts. Michelle? So the next step would be to show that there is a polynomial number of such cuts. Yes, but the, I guess you already guessed why it's true. Yeah, but, yeah, I guess you have to show it. I will show that, yes. It's a good point. Yeah, very good. So let me, um, uh, well, let me keep the suspense, you know, sort of big suspense. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> so let me first just write the algorithm. So then we can uh, explicitly talk about it, so what's going on, and then talk about the running times, just Michel just uh, just said. So uh, the first point is that, yeah, we start with that start being uh, In an optimal health card solution, that's uh, where everything begins. Um, the second step is um, we, we invoke the lemma. So compute the shortest, um, so BX star point. Again, as I'm sure already. Pointed to. I mean, I have to show some things, right? To show first how you compute that set and uh, make sure it's polynomial size, and then, of course, I can block the lamp, but I have to show that first. So once that's done, we compute the spanning tree. So we get a, get a minimum spanning tree T, but not any minimum spanning tree, get one in the, in the support of Y. That's this magic spanning tree that will do it, uh, sort of claim. So from now on, it's just the usual Christophides algorithm. Um, compute the uh, uh, shortest. So QT join, I'll write down once more just to, to highlight what you want to get. And then finally return. Again, multi unit with the join. You can shortcut if you want. Okay. I'll move this up and then we can, uh, we can talk about it. So. So you, you will not show that it's 1.5 versus the Helden compound. No, you not. will show 1.5 versus opt. Yes, and actually, it is true. I'll show something in between. I can use on that. I'll try to be on the Polish a little bit. I can say I will show one to five with respect to my new relaxation, yeah. the one with yeah. respect to the yeah. example. So it's a good point, actually. I, I, I missed saying that at the very beginning. I'm going to show you the table of results. I mean, all results except for the last one, the one by, by Jens and Vera, they were with respect to the health card relaxation. So they're currently in best bound from those, with the gravity bound, 
is the one by uh, by Andras and, and Danke, the, the one that I can map. I'm not sure. There's been some some uh, discussions. There seems that people are improving at Dunk currently. I'm not sure what the current state of the, the art is. No, so this, think, is this is a tiny improvement. But tiny improvement. Okay, it's already already beaten. But uh, but in any case, the, the important result, the last result, the one by by Jens and, and Vera, is not with respect to uh, the health polarization. <coughs> because this is an I program, the same same for mine. I, I don't prove integral to get one of five. I just prove approximation factor. But kind of, but I, but it's kind of nice. I could kind of claim I show you a new relaxation that has one with five integrality gap. There's one thing I could, uh, I, but even though it's of course a very one's a very tailored to the algorithm, so it's a bit um, not that satisfying uh, in terms of integrality gaps. Good. So that's the algorithm. Now let's start on uh, proving things. So, so two things to prove. I mean, I have to show that the approximation factor is indeed what I claim. It's indeed one with five. But also I have to uh, first show that it's actually an efficient algorithm. This. Uh, so maybe the, the first step is to check. Uh, so efficiency of essentially of all those steps you have in there in the algorithm is uh, it's kind of quite obvious. Uh, except for step number two, is the only non-standard step I actually perform. So let's just talk about step number two. And it turns out the algorithm is actually strongly polynomial, but that's not really, uh, that, that's not that surprising, I think. Most of the operations are well known to be um, a strongly polynomial kind. Very good. Let's talk about efficiency. So again, efficiency, for efficiency, I just have to talk about step number two. So let's talk about how to get that Bx star, this, uh, this family of SD cuts. And um, this is a, it's a very similar, you know, similar result by, by Carter that you can invoke here, um, uh, which is that if you have, so the mean cut value, so let me first come to the state. So the mean cut value in G, with respect to x star is one, right? Because um, uh, so x star comes from the half cut relaxation, and every cut is valued at least one, as we talked about beforehand. This the, the, the single cut s of t they have value one, so, so the minimum value is actually one. Now, what Carter's has is actually the um, uh, that almost minimum cuts, there are only phenomenally many almost minimum cuts. This for it's by Carter. So it's a whole sequence of papers. So I've just read Carter, who wrote the first such result. There's some strengthenings, but for what I need, I will just do the simple one, which says that the number of cuts of value at most alpha times the value of min cuts. So in my case, it's just alpha, of course. So this number is at most number of vertices to the power of two alpha. Yes, for alpha half. Um, yes, for alpha half integer. Even though wasn't that improved? Maybe? Not sure. But yeah, for alpha half integer. And I mean, I can use an integer alpha. I think. Yeah. But it's for, alpha, it's for alpha half integer. I think it's the original um, Good. So uh, this means that, I and mean, of course, the b b x star was a cups of value at most three. So what you can do is just you can put first at all the cups of value up to three. So there are how many are there? There are most b to the six many. This can actually also be easily improved, but I will just give you a um, uh, to the six. Um, I mean, you can you can improve that by uh, by doing the following. You can also just take your graph, take your point x star, add one x from s to t, give it a that's an artificial one, give it a value of one. Now all the cups are value two because it just increased every s t copy from one to two. And now I'm not looking at cups of value three, but of value most four. So it's, it's only a factor two higher. So I mean, cups. So I can easily remove that by b to the four if I if I care about the um, Good. So and also I can compute that efficiently because already Carter showed that you can do this in with a randomized algorithm. You can compute all the cups of value most for we should say for half integral alpha uh, times mean cup value uh, efficiently. But also there, there, the deterministic algorithms doing the same. So the, the algorithm finally is not, is not a randomized one if you want to. So enumerate all the cups of value most three, 
The simply key body has t cuts among them and v of bx star. And its cardinality will be bounded by b to the 6. As I said, you can, if you care about it, you can lower that to b to the 4 with a simple uh, additional reasoning in terms of the at the call of that. And in turn, reasoning it based on, on cards as well. Good. So that's no problem. So the algorithm is actually polynomial time. Now let's analyze it. Why is it a one to five approximation? So let's first start with a, with a basic fact. So any, any SP tour is Bx star good. Actually, any SP tour is good with respect to any family of SP cuts because you cross them all with an odd number of times. And the definition of, of being a B good means that you either have a single unit in there or at least three. But if you have an odd number, you will always be in one of these two cases. So, um, uh, so that's, uh, that's good to know. So actually, essentially just ask that if you look at B good points, this is a relaxation of the problem. This is not, I didn't cut off any interest in this. And of course, it also implies that if you take the shortest B star good point, Y, then its value is no more than the value of As I said, it is a relaxation, so it can, so it's no, uh, it's at least as good though. So moreover, a basic fact about the health car polytope of SD path is that it's contained in this banding tree polytope. Actually, you could just as well write the health car relaxation as uh, all the points in the banding tree polytope with the correct degrees. So the degree of SMT is 1, all the other vertices have degree 2. It's the same polytope. So this implies that, and that, the, um, uh, that if you take a minimal spanning tree T, in the support of y, right? so y is in the, um, so it turns out that y is, in, is a health carb solution, so y is in the standing tree polytope, therefore it is at least as good as y. Again, this, here this falls from y, y being in the health carb, uh, being in the standing tree polytope. And as we already showed, this is a relaxation, so here we go. So, the, the tree is indeed no more expensive than an optimization. That's the first thing. As I said, I essentially, I replicate Christophe's analysis. The tree is the most opt, the jaw is the most hot opt. Right? So that's the first step we have to prove. So now I want to finish the analysis by showing. Yeah. So we finish. Showing the following um, that a quarter of uh, x star plus y is actually in the, in the QT joint, the dominant QT joint point. So I'll use this as a parity corruption vector. I mean, let me first, first check. So if I show that, I mean, I mean it done because the, I mean, the length of the, the joint, which is a QT joint. So of course, it's, a, it's the cheapest one, so it's no more than any point, the length of any point in the, in the dominant, so it's no more than a quarter length of x star, the length of y. But again, x star is a solution to the health card relaxation, and as the name says it, it's a relaxation, so it's at most the length of alt. And we already said that the length of y is at most the length of alt. And that will be it. So, so if we are, so as soon as we show that, we're done. That's all I have to show. Then now you may start to see why this is on a, why I like to define the, um, uh, the SD cuts that, I mean, the, this family of BX, of SD cuts, is the BX star points, because, uh, I mean, for SD cuts that are not in that family, the uh, X will be able to have a value of at least three. And um, why would the value of at least one, like every half carb solution? So there will be a, a value of at least four. And for the other cuts, uh, so it's really, really, it really does compensate. But I can just do analysis more formally. Um, so let's do the analysis now. Why is that true? The state? So I'll prove that box statement. It's true because, um, uh, so just look at the different cuts. What, I, what you have to show, I have to look at the description of the QT joint point. Though. So keep in mind, so once again, the, security, the dominant of the QT joint point, so I'll write it once more because now it's really it's important to keep it in mind, QT joint. 
points on the edges, such that you put the least one unit, but on, on any, you know, on all of the cuts, but only on cuts that, that are in a, and that have an odd intersection with QT. So you want the C intersection QT, which is off T, symmetrically turns S T, is off. And here, let's go back to what we discussed at the beginning. So, so this is a discussion when you have S and T, and right here, S and T, and the cut, so an SP cut. So the cut will appear in here if the tree has a he has an even number of edges in the cut, otherwise it will not appear. So we only have to check it for those cuts that, um, uh, that this is fulfilled, this constraint by that point. That's what we have to do. Good. Let me just check. So we have um, uh, so the cuts. And what I will do is I will look at the value, so we have this point here. So I'll just look at the value, what's the value of x star in the And what's the value of y in that time? So let's talk about the different types of cuts you will see in that description. So first let's start with, um, uh, with non-SD cuts. So it says is, is not an SD cut. So if your cut is not an SD cut, then I mean those are both Alcock solutions. So that's at least two units. In each non SP cut, this gives you a value of 4, and the value of 4 divided by 4 is at least 1 in that cut. So, so those cuts are fine. Um, so let's talk about SP cuts. So it says C is, is a cut, is an, C is an SP cut, but it's not in that, in the special family BX star. But if the cut is not in BX star, I mean, by definition of that family, you have at least three units actually of X star value in that cut. And y is always at least one unit, so that's, that's four as well. That's good. So it remains to consider cuts that are in that family Bx star. So let's say there are two types, right? Because b, it's a b good, uh, y will be a b good point, so it will be, y will have one of these two properties with respect to that cut. So let's start with the second one, maybe. Let's say c is, an, uh, is in that family, and, and y has at least three units. But then it's again immediate because y is at least three units in the cut. And x star is a hard carb solution, it's at least one unit, so it's again four. It's good. So now we are left with, a, with one type of cut, which is cuts in here, where y has a single unit in there, and of course, and y is integral. y is zero one. But now we, we get back to the discussion of beforehand. So whenever there's an odd number of edges crossing, the cut will not appear in that description. So, so it doesn't matter uh, how those cuts look like, because they just don't appear in the description. Okay. So this, this proves that, that that point is in the QT jump pointo and finishes the proof of the, uh, of the approximation factor. So everything boils down now to proving that lemma. If you prove the lemma, we are that. Not very good. Quite enough. It's uh, enough time for us to prove that. So I will now give you a substantially simplified version of that recursive dynamic program of, of, uh, of Jens and Vera that we'll, we'll do it for, for my case. Um, and so the idea is we will, we will find such points, the shortest beagle point, short enough, not too good, a shortest beagle point through a dynamic program. And we will build a point from, uh, let's say, from left to right, from S to T. Like a picture soon. Sorry. So my goal is really to to, um, uh, to give enough details, but essentially, you can, uh, I mean, you either have seen all the, all the details necessary, or, or a few gaps, can, you can fill them in relatively quickly. That's my big goal of this, uh, of this talk. So, can you say that last argument again? The last case? That goes away. Oh, last case, yes. So, the last case are our SD cuts. 
yeah. that are, so y is a v good point, vx all good point, so there are SD cups where y has this first property of having a single action here. But then, but this is a good point, so I was, I was a bit quick on that one. Because, so what does it mean? So y has one action, one action's value one, all the others have value zero. Now the spanning tree will be is chosen as support of y, but in the algorithm it just, just erased. So, so the spanning tree will contain precisely that one action, no, no other action. So it will have an odd number of edges in the cut. And whenever you have an odd number of edges in the SD cut, they cut another period uh, in the dominant of the QT joint board. Yeah, so we move in. In fact, it's going to be the same edge. And it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. So yeah. Yeah. It's one plus one divided by two is one. So it's also one plus one divided by two. Uh, I, I agree with the idea. Yeah. 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 Next time, like, yeah, one and three. Yeah, that's... Okay, let me finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, is about, um, so any family of SD cups, so it applies to any family of SD cups. So just think about a family B, B, B or, or it's a big B of SD cups that will try to show you how to find the shortest B good point. So you can forget about whether it's BX dot, it's just any family. It has to be polynomial size still. Mm -hmm. um, it's the shortest B good points by the dynamic program. Let's do this yeah, program. Okay. So, so what's the setting? Uh, so we have um, uh, we have so we've as a t right, and we said we have um, we have as we cut and they, um, uh, I don't assume any particular structure. I think it's uh, will make my point, I guess. So let's let's call this b uh, now. So what does the dynamic program do? Let me just explain it in words. So what we will do is we will um, uh, so the program tries so there will be some cuts, some of those cuts will be cuts where the um, uh, think of the optimal solution has a single edge crossing. And some will be cuts where the optimal solution is more than, than three edges crossing. That's always an odd number, so it's, it will not be two. And uh, so actually it's not hard to see that the cuts where a single edge is crossing, so, so the, or, or, say, or the optimal, you can say optimal solution, but say, you can also say the shortest B-good point, sorry. Let's say the shortest B-good point Y, there will be some cuts that, um, uh, it's a B-good point, let's talk about B-good points. So it's a, it's a B-good point, so there's some cuts, there's precisely one edge crossing for the shortest B-good point, right? It will be in the in this definition of B-good, the first case of the definition of B-good, and some of uh, these three units will be crossing, right? So that's what I, that's what I, should, I should reason about that, I should not talk about that. Right? And so it's not hard to see that the cuts, uh, if you think about the shortest, so thought experiment, think about the shortest B good point, so the cuts where precisely one edge is crossing, those cuts, they will form a chain. I mean, this follows already by the reasoning of Adam Heinberg and Schmoyes, that narrow cuts form a chain. So this is, um, uh, but it can also do it combinatorially, I mean, it's even much easier in this case, because you have just a single edge, there's no uh, significant. So we try to figure out in which cuts, I mean, I'm really just retelling the story of, of, of Jens and Bear, in which, in which cuts, do you have precisely one edge? And, and, and we try to guess those, kind of guess those cuts. So I think of it as follows. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, this will be such a cut, right? The specifically rebound. Now there will be some other cuts. Maybe there's a cut here where there will be a single edge crossing in the optimal, in the shortest B, the shortest B good point with a single edge crossing. Maybe there's another one over here. With a single edge crossing. Of course, here is always a single edge crossing here as well. So this might be a potential, uh, let me do it weekly, consistent. Um, let's assume that the i, it's maybe the next one j. So what, what the dynamic program will do is it will construct the solutions, it will solve at the empty point, and then uh, it tries to you know, first maybe guess that edge, but then guess the and then guess the next SD cut, where a single edge is crossing, and also you can also guess the edge. So that if you if you know that, I and mean, if you if you have a solution, then let me let me explain to you how how we will expand the solution. Now it's just kind of a, a fuzzy explanation because I just tried to convey intuition. But imagine you have a solution up to here. What does it mean to have a solution up to here? You know there's a single edge crossing, 
So this must be a health carp solution on this side of the graph, where I'm at, uh, let's call this the VI, and this is UI, and this is going to be VJ, and UJ. So if you have a solution up to here, you must have a health carp SVI solution in this graph. And for what happens in the future, this is completely relevant. All you have to know is what is the next, the vertex in which you have to continue. Right? A health carp solution on the full graph will be a health carp solution in here between these two endpoints, one in here between UI and VJ, and one in here between UI and this point, and then it goes to the single edge. So we try to kind of build it layer by layer. So let's do one step, just quickly. Let's say you have, you're at a point where you have a health carp solution up to BI, and you know this is the edge of classes. This would be one of the states in an MEC program. Please, Michelle. Did you, did you mention what up to BI means? Did you mention the ordering of the cuts? Ah, sorry. Yeah, but good point. So the, the cuts, good point. So the cuts, uh, they're just SD cuts, so they're not really a chain, so it's hard to order them. So what we will do is, um, maybe I can explain it best if you, um, uh, if you just start right here and assume that I have a solution uh, so up to BI would mean that uh, all vertices contained in BI. So you have, you have a health carb solution only <coughs> on the induced subgraph, induced by the vertices BI, between S and VI. That's what I mean. But it does not induce an ordering on the cuts. That's just what I mean. I pick a particular cut and tell you, or oh, I give you a health carb, a health carb solution up to BI. B it just means up to for the vertices containing BI. But it's not an ordering. So let's say, let's say you're at that point. Now I'll give you one more step because it helps you to understand what, I mean, how we continue. I think it will also clarify maybe this is ordering question. Right? Because I mean, if you were to chain, it's much easier. You can just, uh, it's clear what you have to do here, uh, in which order you have to go through the, the cut. But here, so if you are, let's say you start at the, at the point where up to BI you have a solution. And so all you have to know is what is that vertex here, the UI vertex, to continue the solution. So the state of the dynamic program would be such a couple. You have a solution up to BI, and UI is the endpoint where things continue. Now, let's say you want to, now there are many ways to, to continue. And uh, it's just a uh, highlight, I mean, you should talk about ordering. There's no clear ordering. I can take any new, any other cut that is not intersecting with BI. Any other cut not intersecting with BI it could be a next one. So BJ is a candidate, but also that one is a candidate. But any such cut is okay. I'm not allowed to take this cut here. It is, as I said, it's not possible to have a single edge in, in two cuts that are intersecting. This violates the narrow cuts of the chain, or, or, or even more fundamental uh, uh, common core properties. So I have to extend with some cut that contains BI fully. So one of them. Uh, uh, just yeah. quick question. So if there are no narrow cuts, then it's just like held curve solution times three halves or something. Like, uh, so, so if there is no. Uh, Single edge on any uh, on any cut. Then is it just like you take the, uh, the best health curve solution of the original um, for the original problem and just scale it up? No, 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 no. It would be it would be different. So first, you're not allowed to scale because the a big good point is itself in the health curve polytope. So, uh, so oh, right. scaling up. So I'm not allowed to scale. Yeah, okay. I have to find a different health curve solution. I mean, yeah, that that fulfills those properties for these three units in each uh, in each cut. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, that's actually, um, uh, I mean, if, if this was, if I have to do just that, let's say I uh, tell you, okay, I should give you the, the shortest health carb solution of these three units in each of those cuts. And that would just be an LP, right? Oh, okay. yeah, so that's, that's what I mean. Yeah, you just solve the LP. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 But it's good that we talk about that because it's a, a sub step essentially uses to be size in that case. Right, so. that, that is. Yeah. So let's assume, let's, so there's many ways now to extend. Let's look at one of those ways. One is to extend to BJ, I would say BJ. But of course, there are many such vertices, right? And there are many ways to extend. But, but keep in mind, there's only a polynomial number of such of such tuples, because there's a polynomial number of Bs, mm -hmm. and I mean, we have a polynomial number of Fs. So that's uh, so that's okay. So I can, can think of a big graph where I can say you are allowed to extend from here to here if you want. So you can think of the learning program as the shortest path problem. Right? So what is the cost of extending from here to here? So what we will do is we will take the cheapest The assumption is that BI is a subset of BJ. Oh yes, yes. This, this, thank you very much. There's only so BI subset of BJ. Right. I only, so arcs only exist just precisely for, for those, for such kinds. Yeah, very good. So what would be the, what is the best extension? So maybe things may be a bit confusing now because we need, uh, so we have constraints on all possible cuts, but there's some cuts like just crossing BI that somehow 
we, didn't, we cannot really tell so much about them because there's some part in the past uh, where we have already some solution that we don't want to look at because um, it's a dynamic program, we don't want to look at the specifics of the solution, just at the fingerprint, right? And there's some parts in the future that we're complete now. But it turns out that you can forget about those. Uh, they will be fine in any case. So what you can do is, um, I will show you that. So the cost, so cost of this expansion is the following. It's a natural one. Um, is uh, is length of the shortest U I V J path hard cop solution. With an additional property, I want that. So what I will require is so I look at the at the health carb solution, I mean at the health carb polytope only for this induced subgraph health carb solution. So this means I'm a carb solution in so in the graph G, in the induced subgraph of G induced by B J without B I. Um, but I want to have one additional property. So I want to require I require that in in each of those cuts, the cuts that are that are contained that form a chain with bi and pj, give at least three answers. <coughs> okay. I mean, this is, also I have to give proper credit, that's, that's really the approach of, of Jens and Vera so far. So, so you, have, you want the requirement that, that your solution, let's say, path solution, it's called this z, you want that the z has a value of at least three for each cut, so strictly speaking, the cut should contain Bi union Ui it should be containing Bj without Bj. For each such cut, you require just look at the you take the health carb polytope here, and you add those constraints. So for all the cuts that are kind of compatible with the blue ones, so so be this cut here, also that one here. Maybe it should do. And uh, it should yes. be a strict inclusion, right? No. no. Because isn't the, just the singleton cut UI in some sense a degree cut? Like, won't that just be one? Mm -hmm. uh, the singleton cut UI. Um, so, because you're going from UI, oh, I see. UI to VI, right? So, yeah. if I were, so like, there is only one unit leaving UI, right? You're right, yes, you're right. So, I mean, like, this would be strict, yes. So, okay. I don't know why it's, it's going to be infeasible. So. It's just. It's going to be infeasible. Yeah, yeah, this right. is exactly. So, I have to, I have to. So, that the extension is infinite. Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. No, no, but I need to do that, otherwise it would always be feasible, right? So that's a good point. I have to exclude those. I forgot the right one. So for uh, but even though no, no, oh, no, so, oh, no, no, you're right. No, no, actually, you both, both, no, both are fine. It's true. I mean I cannot I don't have to because I mean, the point is indeed Michelle is right, of course. If you I mean if you keep it that way, it will be feasible, but I mean it isn't feasible because the gas makes no sense. So the I mean, if you have a cut uh, another cut like this, let's say, right? In, in your ST family, but you say, oh, you go from this one to, and this will be the next one that is a small one. It's just not possible. It's impossible. Yeah. No, it's fine. Like, we can do Wait, great. sorry. What, uh, I, like, now I'm totally yeah. lost. That's actually, yeah, the point so is that. Those cuts are to be in your script field family. Yeah, exactly. And you need it to be in So actually, I think you need to, yeah, you, you, you need to have it, uh, I mean, by uh, this one, right? Yeah. Because it's important to. Because it has to be infinite. Yeah, it has, it has to be infinite because it is a, uh, a guessing that is impossible. So, does it make sense then? No. No. <laughs> so, so imagine, imagine I give you this cut BI, I give you a cut here, right? Yeah. Let's call this cut B here. And this is a BJ. And now you have a solution up to BI. Yeah. Now you say, okay, let's complete it. And now with the DP, you guess that the next cut that is compatible with BI and has a single edge in the cut will be this one. Ah, okay. But that guess makes no sense. Yes. That's gotcha. why the cost should be Yes. All right. Good. Thanks for, gotcha. thanks for helping me out. Uh, yeah, that's what you want. Exactly. So, um, and essentially, and so you will use that that value, and of course you use the solution to um, uh, to extend your current solution. So let's go quickly through the bottom theta. So it's certainly, it's easy to see this will be a half solution at the end because you chain together half carb solution, so that's fine. The only is so we don't have to see that it's a B-good solution. It's also clear it's a polynomial time because if polynomial number of states and I use those so if those polynomial number of LPs, that's fine-tuned. The only thing we really have to check is that it's actually be good So that's clearly true for all of the blue cups. Because I mean, they already have a single edge by design. It's clearly true for all of the compatible cups. 
whose state just appear in the LP. So there's just one type of cut we did not consider, which is uh, I'm maybe sweeping a little bit under the rug, but uh, that's not so that important. There's a cuts that that are that are not compatible with the blue ones. Only cuts not compatible with the blue ones are those that it's not immediately clear that the point is bigger. But now look at a cut. Let's look at a cut of such a cut. Let's be such a cut. So B is a is a cut such that. So it's not compatible with the blue ones. This means, uh, not compatible means if you add it, it's not a chain anymore. But if you have a chain and you add something that's not a chain anymore, this means there's a set in the chain such that two sets are, are, uh, are intersecting. So, so this, uh, this means the cut such that there exists on BI, I think BI is one of the blue ones, with B without BI is non empty, and BI without B is non empty. But this is what it means not to be compatible with the new ones. But now you can use again similarity and, and uh, symmetry of the cut function. So look at, look at the point y. Why is the point you obtain through the dynamic program? So look at the value that you have in that cut e plus the value you have in the cut bi. And that's at least the value you have in b without bi plus the value you have in bi without b. Just similarity and symmetry of the cut function. However, here in bi, bi is one of the blue ones. So here you have a single unity in there. But those cuts, remember, b and bi, they both come from this family of sd cuts. Yeah. So the difference between two sd cuts is a non sd cut. Right? Moreover, they're indeed cuts because they're non empty. So the held, it's a held carp solution. This means that in any non sd cut, if at least two units, of course, this implies that. That the value you have on this on this cut here, you actually don't even consider in the dynamic program is at least three. Yeah. And that's the again the property we've shown for, for the point of view. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? So what is the program LP that you can write which is which you are one point five dollars? So it would be the problem one way to get one is one point five dollars in the realization is to take the half process, take any of the ones, take those SD cuts, find a shortest here point for that one, and that one would be nice. It would be one to five years that or the normal statistics one. So it's kind of the yeah, it's kind of so it's a question. No. Uh, an excellent question. I like this question very nice. So what is the representation of the polytope? So it turns out the relaxation I use. So I talk about three points. But there is an uh, I mean it essentially the that's why I use the DP, right? It turns out that we want to have a gap. We want to have that for any cut, SD cut. Either we want a chain there or these three units. Essentially we want to, we want to move away from two for the value of two. So this is actually a non we want to say a non maybe non convex relaxation. I mean, of course we can always define the convex hull. But the, the problem is there'll be, there could potentially be uh, integer points in there that are, in, uh, I mean, that, that don't have the property I, I want, right? Because you could have an, a convex combination of two good points that have suddenly yeah. maybe two edges yeah. in, in some cut yeah. or two units. So it's kind of, I mean, kind of depends on the thing, what you think of when you think about relaxation. So it is, uh, um, yeah. you can think of the convex all of those points, but they have to watch out because the property of goodness is essentially creating a gap between two values. So it's a bit of not very natural in terms of complex relaxation. Well, I mean, again, if you're taking the minimum, um, if you're taking like the shortest point in that relaxation, it should always be a vertex. I mean, as long as it's uniquely defined. Yeah, I agree. We can always say the complex and I mean, any, yeah, I agree. Yeah. You can always do that, yeah. But it's, I mean, just, it's the same problem we always have with taking complex models. You, you don't know what uh, but, but, the comic solution is an integer point somewhere. Oh, you're right. I yeah. I'm thinking that way makes sense. In, in terms of the number of cuts, um, so you said n to the form. Yeah. Can you improve that to uh, more than that? 
can you show in Q? Uh, I'm not, I never tried hard. I mean, those results that you can, I mean, the, the stronger versions of, of Carter theorem where, where you, um, uh, you can drop down the, the exponent. Yeah, I mean, the, it's, a, it's especially because you have all these tests of value two. So, yeah. Because, I mean, like, for example, if you want to take, if you want to take a cyclone, yeah. uh, indeed, you have n to the form of cuts of value within twice. So However, when you fix an edge, yeah. I see. So you, you only have three possibilities from the other one, yeah. because you, you fix the SDH. Oh, I see. That oh, is a very interesting yes. point. So, uh, so that would show only in Q. Oh, that's a good, uh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. But that makes Even though you have equal, I mean, I mean, first there is a difference between less than or equal to two and uh, less than or equal to three and whatever, less than or equal to something and strictly less than. Yeah, you have to watch out because it's a it's yeah, common sure. version, but I mean, if you, you need, you need yeah. a constant gap. I, sure. I don't yeah, have a constant yeah. gap. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. I have to think about that. I didn't try to talk to myself. But uh, it's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. Leading away the break, right? Yeah. More questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's thank you again.